Getting your music on a Spotify playlist couldn't be easier. Let me demonstrate. Firstly, you go and find your song on Spotify. Then after that, you drag your track down to your playlist or new playlist and boom, you've done it. You've made your playlist. Couldn't be easier. In fact, I don't really think we actually needed to have this video because it was pretty much common sense. What shall I do for the next 10 minutes for the YouTube algorithm? What's up guys, Damien Keyes here. Okay, I know that wasn't what you meant when you said getting onto Spotify playlists. So today I'm gonna to take you through everything I know and everything I've researched about getting yourself onto Spotify playlists. But first, let me ask you a question. Would you mind liking and subscribing to this video where we're doing this every single day? No, in all seriousness, let me ask you a question. How seriously on a scale of one to 10, one being not very and 10 being ooh very, how seriously do you take your Spotify? How seriously do you take the energy and effort that you put into Spotify, let's say if it was actually a social media platform? Now, while Spotify isn't social media, it is run by algorithms, so it's about as close as you can get to social media without the interaction. Now in this video, I do wanna go into Spotify curated playlists and individual playlists, but before we do any of that, we need to get back to basics. We need to sort out your Spotify, because if we don't sort out your Spotify, you are not gonna stand a chance in getting into people's playlists. Now, Spotify is very similar to YouTube. It works off an algorithm. It has one job, and that is to provide you with music to try and get you to stay on Spotify for as long as possible. In fact, if Spotify could keep you on Spotify for 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, it would be a very, very happy bunny. So your job is to play the algorithm. Your job is to keep people on Spotify. The more you do that, the more Spotify will reward you. And the less you do that, the more Spotify will ignore you. So putting your track onto Spotify and then emailing a curator of a Spotify playlist and saying, can you put my song on your playlist? That is not going to fly. So come with me on a journey. Okay, so we're on Spotify. We can see that I've been searching for some playlists, which we will get to in a minute, but I wanna work on a band that sent me some music this week, and that band is called Pistol Whip. Now, Pistol Whip, as soon as they sent me the music, I loved it. It is fat riff rock. Check this out. So as soon as I heard this, I was like, I'm in. Okay, brilliant. Guys, love the track. In fact, love both the tracks. This band, I'm all in, I wanna know more. But then when I go to the Spotify, I'm like, ah, how are you gonna get on playlists? Because at the moment, the Spotify has zero love. And what we're gonna do over the next couple of days is we are gonna pour in the love into Spotify like we would on any other platform. So the first thing I would do is sign up to Spotify for Artists. Spotify for Artists is an app that allows you to connect with your fans, but also it has all of the back end stuff, all of the stats that really, really help. But also it verifies you, so you even get a little blue tick. So Spotify for Artists helps you target who are your fan base? Where are your fan base? So for example, should you wanna put a tour together? Where should you be doing gigs? Or where shouldn't you be doing gigs? All of that information is in the back end of Spotify and that is how you get it out. But the other part of this is how we can actually start putting in some information 
into our Spotify profile. Now, the reason why this is important is because at the moment, if we have a look at what we've got with Pistol Whip, yes, we've got the band name, yes, we've got the artwork for the CD single, but that is also replicated above, and there's no band logo, there's no band picture, there's no band bio. So we wanna tell Spotify who we are, we also wanna tell our audience who we are, but the other thing we wanna do is we wanna tell Spotify that we love you and we are taking you seriously, so you need to take us seriously. So the first thing I'm gonna do, and you're gonna hate me for this, is I am gonna put in another artist and we are going to compare. Now bear with me and don't hate me or hit the dislike button for this. I'm picking someone who is number one at the moment and is a little bit yummy. That's right, I am picking our old friend, The Beebs. Justin Bieber, and you don't need to be a believer. This is not about whether you like him, whether you hate him. This is someone who has a multi-million pound marketing strategy. So if we can nick a couple of ideas, then I'm all up for that. So the one thing you notice when you go into his profile, apart from that little blue tick, which you can have too, is he hasn't got a tiny little picture. He's got a banner. And that is the first thing that you're gonna see. That is good real estate. Now, after that, the next thing, it says in the overview, it says the latest release. It says the artist pick. Obviously, it's got the tracks, but underneath that, it's also got merch. So you can actually click on the merch within Spotify. Then after that, it's got the albums. But then as you scroll along, you've got the fans also like, and if you like Justin Bieber, you might like these other people. Then after that, you've got the About section. Now check this out. In the About section, there are 15 more pictures other than the three pictures that are on the main About section. And then underneath that, there is a bio, and that bio is paragraph after paragraph after paragraph. It's saying, this is who I am, this is what I do, this is who I, what I stand for, and that is really important. Then it's got some numbers, and then after that, it's got all of his socials. It's got Instagram, it's got Twitter, he's got Facebook, he's even got his Wikipedia page. Then after that, it's got the playlists that he has recently been featured on. So you can see the playlists are saying, yeah, okay, we'll feature you. We can see you're taking it serious. And the playlists are very interesting. They start small and build up. It's very unlikely that you're just gonna jump straight into today's top hits, but, you might jump into some smaller playlists and the algorithm might grow and then it's like a tree. All of a sudden these roots are growing throughout Spotify. But then more than that, you can put your concerts in. Now this reminds me of the old MySpace pages. If anyone remembers the old MySpace page, yeah, that's right, you all left me and it's just me and Tom at the end, if you remember Tom from MySpace. But you can see all of the locations that this guy is gonna go on tour. So this is saying to the fan base, here is all the information, and therefore keeping people on Spotify just for a bit longer, and because of that, Spotify rewards you. Now, let's go back off Justin Bieber. Please don't hate me for Justin Bieber. Let's go back to Pistol Whip again. Big fan of this band. So now we go back and we, we compare. What we've got is we have got the band name. I don't quite know what they're about from the artwork. I can see that there's a guitar, great, but I don't really know what they stand for until I click the music. So we're saying to people, there's only the music to judge us on and nothing else. Then after that, when we start scrolling down, there's no more information. When we click on the About section, no information whatsoever, but there's 21 monthly listeners and 12 followers, and in concerts, gigs, none. There's none. Not only are there none in Brighton, where I am, but there's none around the world. But I bet you this band a gig, and I bet you they've got gigs. I bet you they can start putting this stuff on Spotify. So in order to do this stuff, you need Spotify for artists. And it's very, very simple. Step one, you download the app. And step two, you claim your profile. And once you are logged in, you have full access. And it is really interesting if you don't have Spotify for artists when you first go in. The one thing I would say is it does start to get a little addictive as it does with YouTube. When you start noticing your numbers going up or down, which is even worse, and you start getting a little bit addicted. So be careful of that, but very, very interesting reading.
Now you're showing your Spotify some love and you need to make sure that all of the information that you're putting in is answering the key questions. Who are you? Where are you from? What do you stand for? What do you look like? Where can I find more about you? All of the key questions that people want to know when they've heard one track or maybe haven't heard a track but have just stumbled across your music from maybe a playlist. Okay, before we start looking for asks or submitting music to get into playlists, we need to do one more thing. We need to start populating this with some numbers. Again, this is algorithm based and a lot of the playlists nowadays are algorithm based and I know that Spotify are pushing more and more for algorithm based playlists because it makes sense. If millions of people are listening to a track, Spotify says it's obviously a track I need to share to more people. If nobody is listening to the track, maybe I shouldn't be showing that to so many people. It's as simple as a binary code. So when you release your single, you need to start pointing people in the direction of Spotify and of that single and not just once, but on a regular basis. You need to start reminding people what they need to do. You need to make sure that all of your links point to your single. You need to make sure that your email signature points to your single. You need to make sure that every day you're putting out stories and content and saying, by the way, I need you to go to Spotify and just listen to the track. And if they are fans, the other thing you can do is say, can you do us a favor? Can you add our track into a playlist or make a playlist but add our track in? All of these tiny details do get picked up by Spotify and they do make a big difference. You have to remember that Spotify is a digital automated version of the music industry of old. It is kind of like a gatekeeper, which is if you don't put in the proof, you can't come in. Okay. Now the juicy bit. How are we gonna get your music onto Spotify playlists? Firstly, we're gonna deal with Spotify owned and Spotify curated playlists. So effectively, the playlists which are owned and managed by Spotify, which are slightly different from individual playlists. Now, if you're releasing a single on Spotify, it does help to get in early. In fact, you can submit a track to Spotify for playlist consideration four weeks before that track comes out on Spotify. But you can do it a week in advance, but that is a bit squeaky bum time and I probably wouldn't recommend it. So why not get in early three or four weeks in advance of your single release? And the way you do this, again, it's in Spotify for artists. You are allowed to submit a track to Spotify playlists, but don't forget, if you haven't put in the groundwork, why are they gonna put it in? It's not like they're just gonna listen to it. Some computer's gonna listen to it and go, it's bloody genius. What they're gonna do is they're gonna go into all of your analytics and see what's working and what isn't and see if and where it fits into the Spotify system. Okay, let's talk a little bit about playlists. Now, playlists come in all sizes, but the big ones tend to be owned by labels or big radio stations. So it's very, very competitive at the top. And what we've got to do is we've got to be smart. So if we've got a niche or if we can find real small or growing playlists to get onto, that starts the ball rolling, that builds that momentum. It's a bit like radio, you get your big hitters, you get your radio one, you get your national radio stations, then you get your local radio stations, and then after that you get your hospital radio stations and your college radio stations, and everything is different size, and you've gotta be realistic and do your research in order to find the right fit for you and your experience and your music and your genre. But just like radio, you can build up. You can build from hospital to college to local to national radio. Now there are other playlists that are owned by labels. Again, very competitive. So if you're looking at Topsify or Filter, Filter's owned by Sony, Topsify I think is owned by Warner. If you're looking at those size playlists, then again, very big, very competitive to get onto. So if you look at some of these playlists that I found, you've got Charts 2020, that's, that's a, a relatively medium size, 130,000, but Fresh Finds, that is big for new music. Fresh Finds, 700,000 followers. That's a big one to get onto. Then you've got things like Global Funk, Your Coffee Break. There's plenty of kind of emerging artist playlist that you can target. 
Now, Fresh Finds, which is really interesting, this one is an algorithm-based playlist. So it isn't a person choosing what goes in it. It is Spotify's algorithm figuring out what will work and what won't and then put it in, which is why you have to give all of the information and the momentum for it to be picked up by something like Fresh Finds. So what about non-Spotify-owned playlists? Effectively, curators that actually do the hard work, kind of like old school radio DJs. They choose the music, they make the show. Well, there are plenty of playlists, but those tend to be owned by radio stations or uh, music journalists or bloggers or YouTubers or even celebrities. But they are people that you can get hold of. Now, many of these curators have their own blog as a way not only of getting hold of them, but in order to show off what they're already doing. So how do you find these Spotify curators? In fact, someone asked me that the other day, and whilst I was talking, I was thinking, they're not hidden away in some secret lair. They want to be found because they're trying to find new music. The same way as radio DJs, radio pluggers, A&R, their job is to go and find new songs, new material, new music, new bands, new artists. So they are there to be found. Your job is to put the research in to actually find them. Now, how you approach them, now that is a much bigger question. So here's a few tips for approaching Spotify curators. Number one, be realistic with who you are approaching. For example, if your band is called Fetus Eater, then maybe you're not gonna try and get your music on Smash Hits or Charts 2020 because the fit doesn't match and all you're gonna be doing is wasting your time and pissing people off. By the way, if your band is called Fetus Eater, then I probably want to hear from you. Tip number two, make sure your house is in order. What we have just been discussing, this is so important. Don't try and skip the queue until this stuff is done. Until you start getting momentum and showing Spotify some love, it is not worth trying to skip the queue and going straight for an ask. And on that note, tip number three, make sure you are patient and try and build a relationship with someone rather than going straight in for an ask. That happens all of the time to me and it's so frustrating when someone Someone will pop up on my YouTube or in my Instagram DMs and on my emails and just say, here's my new song, can you promote it on your Instagram? And I just think, I don't know, who are you? I don't know about your music, I don't know about you, I don't know about your story or your history or where you've come from, or what you stand for. You've just gone straight in for an ask and the answer is always gonna be no. Start with building a relationship. Don't start with the dick pic. Tip number four, when you're talking to a Spotify curator, always have in the back of your mind what is in it for them. It's obvious what's in it for you. But it's the same thing as when you're a radio DJ. When you're a radio DJ, you have got time to fill, yes. But your number one job is to get people to listen. I want more people to listen tomorrow than they did today. And I want to build that audience and I want people to talk and I want people to enjoy it so that they come back. So therefore, what is in it for them rather than just giving you your break. If you can explain what you are doing with your marketing strategy or how you're pushing the single, more importantly, how you are pushing people across to listen to the track on Spotify, especially on their playlists, it starts to give them some reasons to put you in the playlist. It's like a deal. If you do this, I will do this. And that way they can start to weigh up whether it is worth it for them apart from just do they like the music. Tip number five, make sure all of your marketing is pointing in the direction of Spotify. This is the single, this is what I need you to do. You always need to remember when it comes to marketing, you are holding people's hand through the journey. This is what I need you to do next, or this is what you need to do next, so that they know. If you give them five things to do, they'll probably do none of them, so just give them one thing to do. Go and listen to this on Spotify. Tip number six, this one's a big one. Don't buy onto playlists. Now, the reason for this is they're probably gonna be fake numbers, and if they're fake numbers, they're not helping you. The people from the music industry are gonna see and they're not gonna buy into it, they're not gonna believe you. You can also get kicked off Spotify. You're just wasting your time, you're wasting your money. It's an egocentric thing that people would do, the same thing as buying likes on YouTube. It's not worth it, don't do it. Also, think of it from someone who's building a playlist. If they're just allowing you to just jump on it through money, then 
they're probably not taking their audience seriously and it's probably a fake playlist because when you build a YouTube channel, when you build a playlist, you pour your heart and soul and it isn't just a financial decision. So just don't bother. Tip number seven, look into platforms like Submit Hub. Now, Submit Hub is a weird thing. It's kind of like, it's a, it's a platform that allows you to submit tracks to playlists and bloggers for money. And you can get feedback or you can just get a yes or no answer. I don't know how I feel about it. it, it I think it's a good thing depending on the artist. It's really good to get feedback. Don't forget some of the feedback, if you've seen anything from Submit Hub, some of the feedback can be brutal. So just make sure that if you are gonna do that, you can take you can take the heat, you can take the feedback. But it is a way to actually get in front of people and there is a good chance that if your music is good enough and if you've done the right thing, it can be a good inter introduction and it can get you on those blogs and on those playlists. And my last tip for this is think about single 10 and not single number one. Honestly, this is the biggest bit of advice because when you're going in at single number one, thinking of it as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, you are building something. If you are putting everything into single one and hoping that that does everything that you want it to, not only are you going to be disappointed probably, but then it's going to hamper the next single and the next single. Whereas if you think of this as building blocks, this is what I'm gonna do in single number one so that when I get to single number 10, I'm gonna smash it. You are so much more likely to get to single number 10 and be where you want to be. So that should help you get started on Spotify. So a couple of things, a big thank you to Pistol Whip for making great music and hopefully not being angry with me for using their, their Spotify page. Also, massive thanks to Maddie from Burstamo. I don't know if you've seen their YouTube channel, but they do a lot of stuff on Spotify and Spotify playlists because they're working with bands on getting their music on Spotify regularly. And she gave me some great advice on that. So thanks, Maddie. Um, and other than that, do me a favor, if you're gonna like, subscribe, more importantly, come and be a part of this community because it's, it's building every day and I'm so proud of watching you guys grow and seeing the results. But thanks for watching and I'll see you guys tomorrow.